As the sign says, welcome to Specialise. Not the sunny California office, but the UK office just outside of London. And we're here to look at a brand new Specialise Tarmac disc. So let's go and take a closer look. So last year, one of my favorite bikes I tested was the all new 2018 Specialized Tarmac, one of the most improved bikes of the year. It was launched with a rim brake uh, version, but there's no disc brake, but there is now a disc brake option. And DA from Specialized here took me through the brand new bike. And well, let's start with um, the disc brakes. I guess what changes has Specialized made to the bike compared to the rim brake version to accommodate the disc brakes? So there's a few um, obvious areas that we need to look at uh, to consider the disc brakes and uh, one of the things is part of the industry standards as to where the bolt through uh, technology is going or has it settled down. Uh, we feel it has settled down and likewise the spacing uh, for those axles and the bolt through. So at the rear end uh, we've moved to the 142 uh, axle width with a 12mm bolt through and then at the front end we've got 100mm uh, likewise with a 12mm bolt through. So relatively standard fare in terms of the spacing. Uh, the discs themselves, or the calipers I should say, are flat mounted, so the most up to date, road standard, really nice and tidy. The platform itself though, the entire chassis, this was actually developed at the same time as our rim brake version. Um, so with that in mind, we optimised all the uh, handling, all the stiffness, the weight credentials uh, based around both braking styles. We just wanted to come out with the rim brake version first. Uh, one of the notable additions to the, uh, the SL6 this year was that we wanted to increase the aerodynamics of this bike. For a GC bike, where these days you find one stage can have all kinds of terrain in it, it's not just simply a climbing or a, um, a flat stage anymore. Uh, the, uh, the chassis itself increased its aerodynamics uh, compared to its predecessor quite significantly. And one of the things that people often worry about with the addition of disc brakes is okay, how is that going to affect those big aero claims that you made? So what we did when we were developing them in tandem, we were able to wind tunnel test this frame versus the rim brake frame. And by saving um, the uh, front fork area, the crown where the, disc, uh, where the rim brakes would have gone, sorry, and then the, uh, the seat stay area there, we can save aerodynamic drag there, uh, and then it gets put back onto, or uh, slowed down if you like, back where the disc brakes are. So all told, uh, there is parity in terms of aerodynamics between the two frame styles. Rim brake or disc brake, neither one is uh, faster or slower so than the other. there's no penalty in terms of aerodynamics with the disc brakes because Correct. you've made savings in certain areas and gained back what you might have lost with additional disc brakes. Exactly, yeah, the, the common thinking would be that uh, this sort of style of braking would ultimately be slower, which it is uh, in terms of aerodynamics, but we're able to save more elsewhere on the frame. That's very impressive. And in terms of weight, I know we talked earlier and weight wasn't a key priority, but mm. it's a weight penalty in going to disc brakes compared to the rim brake version, because that was a very light bike and one of the key headline things was the, the weight drop, uh, like 200 grams lighter than the previous SL5. Yeah, correct. So, so we did uh, shave quite a lot of weight out of the, uh, out of the overall bike and chassis, uh, primarily. So if we were to talk about the two chassis just purely stripped of any components, then you would find that they're the same weight. Uh, there is parity there. Okay. The penalty, which indeed there is one, a slight weight penalty, comes from uh, the caliper system itself, so the, the disc brake calipers, the overall um, connections of the hoses uh, and the shifters, which do add a slight penalty. So bike to bike, uh, we are talking in the region of 250 grams heavier. Um, frame to frame, though, there is parity. 250 grams, that's quite impressive. I think we've been looking at about 400 to 500 grams kind of weight penalty for mm. a disc brake bike compared to a rim brake bike it's based on. So like really narrowing that gap between the rim and disc brake bike. And yeah, trying to keep it as, as close as possible. And even though we firmly believe that disc brakes offer uh, any rider, pro peloton or just starting out, a, a more consistent um, braking system uh, and therefore overall feel of the bike and being able to control it, um, we wanted to take that into account when building the chassis. So our overall handling credentials 
um, will be the same on this platform as they are on its existing rim brake brethren. Okay, and aside from the disc brakes, the rest of the bike is essentially the same as the rim brake version in terms of, of the aero down tube and the handling and construction of the frame? Correct, yeah, the construction of the frame uh, is identical uh, to the rim brake version. The rider first engineering story where we engineer every single frame size is also consistent with the disc brakes. Uh, and that actually allows us to uh, operate this platform uh, shared across the women's tarmac and across the gents tarmac as well. So Rider First Engineering really focuses on the, the height of a rider uh, and therefore their center of gravity, including the bike in relation to the floor. Uh, and as you can find many different heights of male and female riders, uh, it uh, is no longer requiring a specific geometry. We focus on the contact points on the ladies tarmac of which there will be a disc version. So saddle, crank length, and handlebar width. Most importantly, the chassis itself underneath uh, is exactly the same as the Gents okay. version. And the handling was a, kind of a key highlight of the original bike when I tested it last year. Mm. Have you managed to retain the same kind of handling with the disc brake version in terms of the through axle was different and a different fork? Yeah, so the, the fork has been optimised around that. So given that you've got uh, extra width on the rear of the bike, the fork of course is still only 100 mils, but that 12 mil axle does tend to um, provide a little bit more stiffness. Yeah. Uh, so we'd engineer in, um, in the, into the layup, should I say, uh, to allow for that added stiffness so that the overall handling is going to be the same as or indeed parity to that. So you should be able to jump from this bike to the rim brake version and build the same. Okay, yeah. That's that's in essence, yeah, what we're going for. Okay. And this bike here, how much can we expect this one to cost in the shop when it's available? This bike will come into stores uh, and be available at a price of nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, that does include a power meter as well. So that's the other big story, of course. Mm. Uh, you've now launched a power meter, and this bike is wearing the uh, power meter. It is, yeah. So the, the power cranks, they are slightly tucked away on this shot here, but um, the overall shape of the cranks themselves is identical uh, to our existing S-Works cranks, but we're utilizing a, a pod-based system on the left-hand crank arm and then tucked neatly onto the drive side in between the spider of our dual-sided S-Works uh, power meter here, which will come on the bikes as standard um, and will be shipping from March. Um, later on in the year, we'll be able to have it aftermarket in both a dual-sided, as we have here, and a single-sided format as well. And it's going to be standard on the S-Works bike? It is standard, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly that. So as this launches, the uh, gents' bike, the ladies' bike, comes with the power meter as standard, dual-sided. Good. Good stuff. Cool, thanks for your time. Thank so you. that's the brand-new Specialized Tarmac SL6 with disc brakes, available uh, well now, hopefully, at the time of publishing this video. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Hit that like button if you did. Hit the subscribe uh, button for more videos from OCC soon. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.